Thank you, Chairman. Uh, before I get to cybersecurity, uh, Mr. Secretary, I, I want to uh, remind all that the success that we've had with en open enrollment at the ACA has been stunning. I think that's a fair term. Uh, but also the consequence of what happened in this very room 14 years ago. And you consider, as we sit here today, every child in Massachusetts has health insurance. Ninety-seven percent of the adults in Massachusetts have health insurance. And it polls in the high 60 percentile in terms of satisfaction. So I think that we should not forget the success that we had. Nationwide, it's polling in the low to mid-60s. Yes. And the enrollment process continues. And we are indeed grateful for the work that took place here. But let me talk about cyber attacks on the healthcare infrastructure that you're quite familiar with. Hospitals and healthcare providers are facing increasingly frequent and sophisticated threats, even when they're not directly targeted. The recent cyber attack on Change Healthcare and the resulting fallout demonstrates the potential consequences we face if we do not take appropriate measures to protect and secure our data and the systems. Talk about what HHS has done to support the healthcare system in light of what we've learned at Change Healthcare and the attack over the last few weeks. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, since we first learned of the attack on February 21st, uh, we have been in near constant communication with uh, not just United Health Group, but with most of the stakeholders, especially the insurers, uh, who are the payers for most of the bills that providers submit. Uh, we stood up our preparedness operations to try to be as uh, available to providers as possible. To date, we have, I believe, issued some two and a half billion dollars in payments in advance, and I want to make sure that's clear. We haven't received the bill but we've provided $2.5 billion in payments because we know that these providers typically will bill us a certain amount every month or have a certain number of patients that where they will bill us for Medicare or Medicaid. So we have made an arrangement so they can bill us in advance, and we will reconcile the differences later, but we want to keep them afloat so they can make their payroll. That means that some nearly 6,000 providers today have already received, as a result of Medicare or Medicaid's actions, payments even though the bills have not come through the door. And we're going to continue to do that, and now we're insisting that the insurance companies that have, by the way, received money from the federal government under Medicare and Medicaid, that they also do the same and make it available to those uh, providers. Thank you. I'm going to give you a chance to talk, uh, Mr. Secretary, rather than just dominating the time. So talk about the steps that CMS is taking to support the long-term care workforce and to increase oversight of those who operated outside the rules, which we painfully learned during the COVID crisis. And you've got a couple of minutes to talk about it. Congressman, thank you for that. Um, one of the biggest depressions that we faced in America with COVID was the loss of a workforce that cares for Americans, whether it's child care, whether it's long-term care, whether it's nursing homes. So many of those workers have never returned, many because they died, many because they just found something else or they found that it was too dangerous to do the work. Uh, we are now trying to make sure that we help the various sectors bring up the workforce. And so we have made several hundred million dollars in investments to try to support the training and the development of a, of a more broad workforce. And we're focusing quite a bit of that uh, investment on the behavioral workforce side. And so we continue to try to make sure that if you're going to go into the business of care, it pays you more than going to flip burgers at the, the local fast food joint. And it's tough, but that's what we have to do. We want to professionalize the service of caregiving in America. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Mr. 